Hello, my name is Monica Bednarek and I work at the Department of Linguistics at the University of Sydney. This screencast belongs to a series called Key Concepts in Corpus Linguistics and the topic for this screencast is analysing concordances. Concordances allow you to analyse every instance of a given search term in your corpus. But to do this systematically and comprehensively, it is worth following step-by-step -step procedures that corpus linguists such as Tim Johns and John Sinclair have proposed. Such and similar procedures are also described in Tribble and Baker. Basically, the first step is to generate concordances, to sort them and observe the evidence from your corpus. You then try to classify the word forms that you find, grouping them according to salient features that they have in common. For example, some of the co-occurring cool word forms could be modal verbs, so belong to the same grammatical category. Others might belong to a semantic or grammatic category like politeness. From that classification, you try to generalize some patterns or tendencies that seem to occur in the data. And finally, interpret these patterns. Why do they occur? What is their likely function? Or what do they tell us about the search term and its meaning and use? Before I show you an example analysis following this process, it is worth noting that the usual focus of this step-by-step -step procedure is on repeated co-occurrences, that is, at least two occurrences. You should still document every single piece of evidence that you observe, because sometimes it only becomes clear at a later stage that an instance is part of a repeated pattern. And also, if your aim is to test a hypothesis, one counterexample from the corpus may actually be enough to falsify your hypothesis. So, let's look at an example. Uh, these are some concordances for the word form season in a corpus of DVD blurbs. Um, so DVD blurbs are the cover texts on the back of DVDs that advertise a TV series. Here I used the free software program Ankong for my analysis and I will only focus on the left hand code text and specifically I will only look at one position to the left of the word form season. So, uh, to help me observe the evidence, the first step is to sort the concordances alphabetically, here according to one word left of the search term, that is L1. And these are some sample concordances from the corpus. Step 1 is observe. So here I've written down every single word form that occurs at this position, L1, in my corpus. This is part of the observation. I can easily see what word forms occur with season. The numbers in brackets stand for repeated occurrences. For example, the word first occurs four times immediately to the left of season. The next step is to group these in some way. Can we classify these individual word forms into groups that share common features? Well, I believe we can. So here's one way of classifying these word forms. Looking just at the L1 position, we can see that the word season either starts a sentence, co-occurs with a positive evaluative adjective such as astonishing, or co-occurs with quantifications such as seven disc, co-occurs with a numeral or some other indicator of which season the DVD is concerned with, like first or final, co-occurs with the name of the TV series, or a proposition or determiner. These are all repeated occurrences, but there are three word forms that at first glance cannot be grouped with the others. And those uh, word forms are ended, its and top. But if we actually look at the sentences where these three word forms occur using concordancing, we can see that um, its season 5, for example, seems to be an alternative to fifth season. So it could perhaps be grouped with the uh, numeral um, indicator of season. Top is actually part of a compound adjective over the top, so this is clearly an um, evaluative adjective. Um, so this leaves only one occurrence unclassified, uh, the verb ended, and um, perhaps this is simply because it's rare to refer to the previous season rather than the advertised season in these blurbs. But that's um, just a hypothesis. So now that we have classified, classified most of the co-occurrences, um, can we make some generalizations? It seems as if in DVD blurbs that advertise a TV series, the season is commonly explicitly identified. The season may be closely linked to the TV series. Uh, the season, and by extension of course the TV series, is commonly evaluated positively and the contents of the DVD may be quantified, for example how many discs, how many episodes. More research however is needed to generalize about the other findings, um, uh, such as the one where season starts a sentence and so on. For that we probably have to look at the right hand code text. Or look further on the left as well with prepositions and determiners. Finally, how can we interpret these tendencies? It seems as if the findings can be tied directly to two functions of the blurbs. 
So identifying the season in the TV series fulfill an informational role. Evaluating the TV series and quantifying the contents of the DVD fulfill a persuasive role. And both seem to work to differentiate and sell the product, the DVD, to buyers, and hence work in the service of blurbs which are marketing promotional texts. Now, this was just a first glimpse into the data to illustrate the procedure for analyzing concordances. Of course, we would need to do more research to generalize about the other observed evidence. And we would need to repeat all four steps looking at other positions on the left hand, L2, L3 and L4, so word forms occurring 2, 3 and 4 to the left of the word season, and of course, uh, words occurring to the right of season, which we have completely ignored here. So if you want to know more about this research, have a look at my 2014 paper on evaluation in DVD blurbs. That's it, and here are the references.